Hey guys, so today instead of what's in my bag, we're going to play what's in my portfolio because I just found this gigantic portfolio in the back of one of my closets when I was cleaning some things out and it looks really old. I don't think it's actually storing art from elementary school, which is when this was made. Just because a bunch of my little kids stuff is elsewhere, but there's something in here that I have not seen in a long time. So we're going to investigate and see what's up. A graphite drawing of Oprah. <laughs> I had to think for a minute who that was. It says 10th grade. So this is when I started getting really into portrait drawing, kind of like between 8th and 9th grade. And this was actually a really fun project we had to do in my history class. I like how it turned out. I'm not that into Oprah, I'll be honest. Like, don't dislike her, but don't really have a particular tie to her either. I literally remember picking this photo because we had a choice of famous people we could draw. And this old high school photo of hers from the 60s, I just loved the, like, hairstyling and the jewelry. And aesthetically, I thought it was really fun. So that was the main reason I picked it. Oh my gosh, precious. A cat paint by number. This is the only paint by number I've ever did in my life. Oh gosh, this is definitely from upper elementary school. Yeah. So bad. So bad. This is... Let me see if I can unwrap it here. Um. Oh. It's not wanting to unwrap, and I don't want to make a big mess, but you get the idea. So I decided to try oil pastel for a while in middle school before I figured out I hated them. I think this is from 8th grade, maybe ninth grade, actually. So we've got a mystical-looking woman with moons and planets and a silhouette of a howling wolf. Yeah, that's... That's about it. That's about what's going on. <laughs> All right, what else is in here? Because these first couple things have been pretty darn funny. Oh, another cat. <laughs> this drawing. Oh, I got 98% A. Good job. I wonder what flaws they found in this to take off 2%. Maybe it's the wonky whiskers i don't know but this is definitely from seventh grade i want to say i remember this i do not recall being as into cats as i was for a time there that's so funny i guess i secretly wanted a cat but like everyone in my family including me is allergic so colored pencil drawing of a cat what else what else oh this is eighth grade. Okay, this is my first portrait I ever drew when I actually knew what I was doing. Um, those that live in the Midland, Michigan area where I do will know who this is, but I took a portrait drawing class one summer with Armin Mersman, a really well-known artist. I mean, he's exhibited internationally, but is from Midland, very well-known in Midland. And when my parents signed me up for it, I did they didn't even know that this was like a big deal person. They're just like, oh, that's cool. Middle school drawing class. You like to draw people. Changed my life. I just have to say, like, I draw people as well as I do because of that junior high summer art class. Just life changing. And as you can see, this looks a lot better than my other people drawings I've showed you so far. So, very cool. This was from a mattress ad, I believe. I don't know why I picked this one not really my style typically but I think I just liked that it was the face was at a tilt it was a different sort of angle so this is very special to me I'm glad I found it now okay now we're going into some funny fangirl stuff so here's another portrait from ninth grade oh, there's some notes on the back nice likeness and something I can't read with a question mark. 
but yeah so this is an older from an older photo of Davey from AFI we're about to start the fangirl stuff I think there's a couple of these in here I was really really obsessed with this band starting in eighth grade and it persisted like all through high school so there will be a lot of these probably if they haven't already been thrown away some of them oh 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 there's more yep there's more there's more collage a collage of afi oh and what's even better is we've got the like um kidnapper serial killer like individual cutout letters up here with like one of my favorite song lyrics of theirs Oh my gosh, this was hanging in my room forever. <laughs> it's really funny. I didn't know I still had this. So I don't know if this is a work of art, but I mean, it's composed nice. It's, it's laid out nice. It's a pretty nice collage. Oh, this is something else that's hanging in my room for the longest time. I got really into um, Andy Warhol also, another little fixation. Um... <laughs> And so I started doing a lot of paintings that were like, where they looked like the printing, like screen printing style, but weren't really because I had no idea of a screen print. I took a sc screen uh, printing class in um, 10th grade to finally do it. And I was terrible at it. I tried so hard and just, oh my God, could not get the hang of it. So imitation. <laughs> So these are all just random photos I took that I thought were cool. So this studded belt was actually plaid as well at the same time. Pretty, pretty cool. Here we have some lime green. I remember distinctly they were lime green stiletto sandals. Went through a short period of time where I was in the heels and then never again. But the dress was lime green too and then lime green necklaces, which I artfully draped around my feet because that makes sense for some reason. Clock through a window, <laughs> a little still life. And then me with hair covering half my face and my tongue sticking out and colorful eye makeup. So we're getting a little bit of scene kid vibes. I never went all the way with any of that, but there were, there were touches, there were a couple symptoms. <laughs> so let's see. Shirley Manson from Garbage, another person that I would draw in my high school art class over and over and over again for assignments. I always really liked how this one turned out. But yeah, I'm sure my art teacher got sick of seeing <laughs> these same two faces. Like, he probably would get my assignments turned in and be like, again, really? Really? Oh, another person. So this is my favorite life drawing that I ever did when I took a life drawing class in college. It's really light and wispy, so kind of hard to see, but I really like the line work and the hair and the position. I don't know. I just really like this. Um, life drawing is definitely a very important class if you want to draw people if that's going to be your thing. I learned a lot just by, not necessarily from the teacher. He didn't really teach anything. He just kind of sat us there and was like, go. So, um, but uh, just the practice of weekly drawing figures from life, I learned a lot through practice, but I don't really love anything I came out of that class with just because I'm not into representing things exactly how they are. I like things to look different than in real life or I get kind of bored so the class itself was very very boring to me and actually I kind of stopped going halfway through once I'd gotten the hang of it and I was like okay I'm good I got this and so when we had to turn in portfolios at the end of the semester like 75% of the stuff in my portfolio was just random things I'd done on my own time not actually class assignments and I still got an A because they were cool but now that I'm an art teacher, not necessarily someone that grades art, but that, you know, um, gives assignments to people and teaches and tries to give them things to do that will enhance their practice, I'm kind of like, Elise, you jerk.
like so I have mixed feelings about some of my decisions as a student now that I'm actually on the other side of things it's pretty funny but speaking of not liking things from real life here's another well not another this is actually I think the only watercolor painting I've seen so far but I started doing a lot of watercolor paintings in late high school like 11th and 12th grade this is what happens when you don't use references though like even when I do my fantasy surrealism crazy stuff that looks nothing like real life I still gather references for different bits and pieces because like look at those facial proportions yikes but this picture was based on a fantasy book I was writing that I never finished <laughs> at the time and so oh gosh I probably still have it saved in a notebook somewhere but the overall premise I remember it was called Amethyst Eyes and I even made that my AIM screen name <laughs> because I got so into writing this story and as you can see eyes everywhere and I remember it has something to do with like a possessed dagger and she accidentally ends up killing someone she's in love with but then tries to bring him back to life I I remember yeah, I remember vague little snippets. And there's a blue willow tree, which is important somehow to the story, but I don't remember how. Um, but yeah, so the whole AIM thing. I had a friend that I met on Zanga, again, very early 2000s, that was like an online friend, not an in real life friend, but he started helping me with this story. And so we, made all these different screen names on AIM for like the names of different characters and would talk to each other as if we were those characters and write the um, dialogue for the story through this sort of means. And that went on for a little bit, but then I started getting frustrated because I'd be like, I was too much of a control freak and I was like, no, that's not what that character would say. You know, it, it just turned into a whole thing, so we abandoned it, but crazy another portrait I'm glad that I like drawing portraits because I swear in high school art that's almost all we did so I'm very lucky that I like drawing people anyway so this is I don't know it's cool looking but it didn't come out as successful as far as looking like him but this was technically from a photo of Adrian Brody acting in a movie where he's a punk rock guy I don't remember what movie but this is when I start adding some like unrealistic things and like kind of swooshy creative touches to my portraits like looks like he has a glass eye and it's like cracking apart and seeing into the void I don't know <laughs> I got an A all these have the grades on the back which is hilarious eh, just a piece of cardboard nothing too exciting oh now we start getting into acrylic painting, which I did not really get decent at until actually fairly recently. So this is hilarious. Um, not only is it not very good acrylic skills, like the shading and stuff is horrible. <laughs> and this is, I, this is from high school. I want to say 11th or 12th grade, not very good. But what's even more funny is like, we got a Christmas tree with an eyeball in it. Uh, face, hands, swirls what looks like little gemstones they look like they would be magic gems you have to collect in like a video game or an anime cartoon they have different powers like they're giving me starry vibes but a different shape <laughs> we got wings very bad wings i just here's some like ancient looking symbols or an attempt at that at least this is so bad that i think i'll keep it forever oh my gosh that makes me happy oh more just paper oh my god another bad acrylic painting <laughs> soothing colors i mean i'll give it that there's not, not a definition in the background and then we got a big dark tree that is not what bark looks like <laughs> little individual lines for the grass too oh my gosh there's a mermaid back there though it's way too light you can hardly see it but random just like a couple leaves and one bunch of grapes another eye another eye where it shouldn't be that was my aesthetic at the time still kind of is to some extent trees just 
dancing above ground, flowers growing out of the roots. Many things are happening that make no sense. So that was like, yeah, I was starting to attempt surrealism, but like not really, not really getting it yet. <laughs> not really getting it yet. Oh gosh, another acrylic painting. I really just did not want to give it up. All right. This one is not as horrible, I guess, but butterflies, sunset, water. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> All this goes to show practice is so important. Like really, I mean, those are worse paintings than some of my beginner art students do in my classes for real. So practice practice anyone can do art I truly believe that everyone laughs at me but I think almost anyone can do art like art is not like basketball or something where it's like no not anyone can do that anyone can do art if you just practice I truly truly believe that so I think this is the last one yep this is the last last surprise so another Andy Warhol type things again I got really really into him for a while until I found out he's kind of a jerk and didn't do a lot of his own art and that bummed me out but I was into the style for quite some time really into pop art and so I did this to match my bedroom I loved having my walls covered with stuff and as you can see to very early 2000s fashions like look at what these people are wearing and their hairstyles oh my gosh <laughs> so funny story about this one too I started doing a lot of these style artworks and one of my teachers noticed it when I was doodling in class and just doing something like this with markers and she asked me she was a yearbook teacher to paint something like this as a mural outside the yearbook room because she thought it'd be really cool because it's like, oh, it looks like school pictures, you know, it goes with the theme. And then I could just write yearbook in, you know, fancy lettering. And so I did it and no one got it. Like all the other students were walking by while I was painting it and they were just like, I don't get it. Why are their faces blue? Like I did it all in different shades and different values of blue and yellow because that was our school colors. And I was just like, oh, well, you know, it's not supposed to be realistic colors. It's like a um, screen printing style, like Andy Warhol, pop art. And they didn't know what pop art was. And they didn't know who Andy Warhol was. And I was just like, I don't belong here. Oh my God, what is going on? Yeah, so I don't even know why I agreed to do that mural. I wasn't getting paid. And like everyone in that class was so mean to me. So mean all the time. It was horrible. Uh, I almost quit like halfway through the year, except it's really hard to quit a class or switch in high school. It's not like college, they don't really let you do that. So I had to stick it out and I liked the graphic design stuff I was doing in there, but so mean. So that is what is in my portfolio. This was a really fun adventure. This was my first time looking at all this stuff in forever too. So a nice little trip down memory lane and for the people that watch my videos, I hope this shows you that practice, as I said, is so important. Because honestly, even a lot of my artwork from high school, I mean, it might have been better than some people's in my class, but it wasn't, it wasn't that great. Like, it wasn't something that you go like, wow, this is an art prodigy. Um, so, you see my stuff I do now, it really, really is just practice. So. No matter what age you are, you don't have to start practicing even when you're, you know, in high school or college or younger. Even if you are 60 years old, you still got time to pick a form of art that you really enjoy and get kind of good at it. Have fun. Thanks for watching.